There's going to be a short break of about another 20 minutes or so. But for the next few minutes, we are going to remember a former Wimbledon champion, Jana Novotna, who died sadly at the end of last year when she lost her battle with cancer. We all remember those incredibly emotional scenes after she lost the final to Steffi Graf in 1993 and she cried on the Duchess of Kent's shoulder. But five years later, here at the tournament she loved so much, she finally achieved her dream of lifting the trophy. Andrew Cotter remembers one of this sport's most popular champions. Jana Novotna was one of the greatest talents of her generation. She'd already won five doubles Grand Slams and risen to eight in the singles rankings by the time she walked through the doors of the All England Club in 1993. Her semi-final opponent that year was nine times Wimbledon champion Martina Navratilova. Now they'll play. She was a very physical player, she was similar to Steffi, except she was coming to the net. It was really hard to find openings against her, so she was a tricky player to play against. She'd been known to be a bit flaky in some of her previous matches, but this year she looked terrific. When I lost Yana, I thought if she plays like this, I think she has a chance to win. You know, I really was pulling for her as, as a fellow Czech. Novotna's problem was that in her era was not only Navratilova, but another of the greatest of all time, Steffi Graf. And it was the German she would now face in the final. Novotna began well, but it was Graf who took the first set at a tie-break. Yet in the second, Novotna took control, and racing to a 4-1 lead in the decider, the confidence she had shown against Navratilova was once more clear to see. At moments like this in the past, She's tended to choke on her leads, but I don't think it's going to happen today. We'll see. Juice. You could just see the belief kind of sink away from Yana. Before our very eyes, we saw that evaporate, and Steffi just got better, and Yana just got worse. Having been so close to victory with four straight games lost, Novotna was now on the brink of a painful defeat. That's it. Long set, Mark Misgraf. Two sets to one, seven six, one six, six four. The way she lost it was just heartbreaking because she lost to the Wimbledon final. She didn't really lose to Steffi Graf. She could see how she got nervous and emotional. When you get that close, you've been wanting it for 20 years, and then you fail. It's just heartbreaking. But it was what immediately followed this most dramatic match that would fill the newspapers and live in the memories of all who saw it. Her face crumbled. It's a natural thing, isn't it? You kind of might have built yourself up, played Wimbledon finals, and you didn't make it. And she did what comes naturally, cry at everyone. Nothing wrong in that. She just, she just told me, Jana, you will do it. I believe you one day, you will do it. And uh, I just became very emotional and it was very nice. I appreciate it very much, is what she said. But I'm sure that the improvement that she's shown will one day allow her to hold a rather larger plate above her head than that silver salver. You know, as tennis players, you have to have kind of short-term memory and uh, keep going. And perseverance is, I think, in our blood. And Anna Novotna showed that perseverance. She kept coming back, coming back. She returned to the final in 1997, but lost in a one-sided affair, making the defeat easier to bear. She's done it! The question was, would her chance come again? I think she'd told her, don't worry, there's no reason why you shouldn't be in the final for a third time, there's no reason why you shouldn't win it. I probably would have said that, yes. Come on, you can do this. You can do it, yeah. And so on Saturday the 4th of July, Jana Novotna would have her third chance to take the prize which had twice escaped her. Natalie Tozzi, our opponent, playing in her first Grand Slam final. And I just thought Jana would, would take this one. She, she always played to win. She never played not to lose. And I thought this match was on her racket. Novotna soon found her rhythm, and the athleticism for which she was known helped her take control of the first set. She was disciplined, she was focused. The second set was tighter. Novotna let slip a 5-3 lead. Perhaps nerves would again be her undoing. A tie-break had to be endured to complete her task. 
And now, having had all the experience of those disappointments, she was ready to win at last. She just won more the match than me, and that's it, because she had an opportunity before, she didn't get it, and uh, me, I was so happy to be in the final already, that uh, I didn't have the little thing that makes a difference. I cried. It's going to choke me up now to think that she had to wait for five years for that moment, and you know, she never knew if that moment was going to come again. She could have choked, and that was a, a word that nobody wanted to use, but that's basically what happened in 93, to see her come through. It was joy, but it was also relief. Okay, she finally got it. And there was for Jana Novotna a meeting with an old friend again. I think we loved, loved, been there, done it. We became quite firm friends. And at last she'll be able to hold aloft this famous trophy, which so many great champions have held aloft before her, including, of course, the great Czech predecessor, Martina. Never Relief, happiness, thrill, uh, elation, and uh, I think the whole world was pulling for Yana. And it was the correct result, I think. Uh, the tennis world was pulling for her, that's for sure. Novotna played her last singles match at Wimbledon in 1999, but she continued to have great success on the double circuit for years after. In retirement as a player, she became a respected voice as a radio commentator. I think she brought a sense of what Wimbledon was about. It was the pinnacle of her career to win the Wimbledon title. And uh, so when she is in the booth, she's bringing the history of Wimbledon and what it's like to be there on the center court, what it's like to be a former champion. But unknown to all except her closest friends and family, Jana Novotna had fallen ill with cancer. It was an illness which took her far too young late last year. It's a shock because she's so healthy um, takes such good care of herself and just 49 years old. It was devastating. She was just so positive and always kept fighting and she never gave up. So we remember a Wimbledon icon, Jana Novotna, the woman who never gave up. One of the loveliest players on tour, Jana Novotna, who lost her battle with cancer last year. And here on Centre Court, Billie Jean and Tracy, and we will hear from Martina Navratilova as well. It's, uh, it's just so sad. She was such a popular player and champion, wasn't she? And yeah. an incredible story. Very, and too young, only uh, 49, to pass away from cancer. And then, obviously, it, that makes me think about Maria Bueno, too, who yes. also passed away. And, you know, I played her in 1966, and uh, I always see her every year here at Wimbledon. And, uh, Two great champions have left us, and um, both from cancer, and it's just too bad. But Yana, uh, I'm so glad she won because it was so important, and uh, everybody felt so much when she was crying. The Duchess of Kent's shoulder, and she was such a great player, so she deserved it. She was. She was so attacking. She was a great athlete, wasn't beautiful. she? And she was just beautiful to watch. She was. She had a great style, great athleticism. But I think when she when she cried on the Duchess's shoulder. Everybody in the world, whether you're a tennis player or not, knows what it's like to have something kind of slip through their fingers, right? And then we saw her go through another final, and she lost there. So I think everybody in the tennis world cried in unison when Yana finally was able to beat Tosia because she just kept going after it, just kept going after it. And that's, that's what you're supposed to do in life. And she kept her chin up. She kept her head up. Wonderful person, and as Billy said, way too young. Yeah, she will be very much missed, certainly missed uh, here at the Champions. It was always lovely catching up with Yana. But you feel in some ways with Yana winning here, it's, it's very similar to Simona Hallett possibly winning at the French Open. Yes. After so many attempts, you know, will I ever off, get one? Get back, get your <laughs> you just want to get through that one big win, and then it's off your back, and then you can breathe and exhale again. And then you're on your way. It, it's, it's a huge... It's a huge weight off your shoulders. And also getting to number one. Simona had totally. a number of, of matches last year. If, she, if you win this match, you become number one, and she wasn't able to do it. And it kept happening, whether it was the three major finals that she lost, all in three sets, or it was getting to number one. She finally right. touched number one at the fall of last year and then got over 
the finish line at Roland Garros this year. That's the same kind of thing. I think everybody in unison, okay, could take a sigh of relief. We all know what that she feels She deserved like. it. Alice yes. finally embraced the situation. She embraced who she is. She believes in herself, thanks to a lot of people around her. Um, and she actually did it, not just think about it. She actually had to do it on the court. But she didn't give up on herself, which was really great. Because you've got to keep believing in yourself. And she did. And she finally did it. And boy, she's a different person. She's smiling a lot more when you see her. Isn't it amazing? She's so much happier. Uh, and things have changed a lot. But she said she's really the same inside that she really still believes. And she's thankful to everybody around her. So um, I, I look forward to seeing more of Halep, actually, in the future. But She's everything fine. that she went through, I think we all went through it with her. You know, as commentators, as tennis fans, we saw Simona would go dark. Oh, that she would get so negative right. so quickly in a oh. match. And you'd say, okay, Simona, can you turn this around? And I think the biggest change was when Darren Cahill actually left her team yeah. in Miami last year, 2017. He said, you know what, you gave up in that Joanna Conta match, and I just, I'm not going to be there. And so he left the team, and it hurt Simona so badly that she said, I am going to change. I'm going to be more positive on court. And that was the switch. Thank God he came back. Because yes. she said, you've got to come back. I, I, I promise you, I, I will believe. I promise you, I'll never give up again. And she has. She's kept her word. It yeah, certainly uh, has. And also a sports psychologist. That seems to be the, the buzzword around yes. this Wimbledon with Kevin Anderson, Simona Halep, everybody else. But anyway, we're going to now start uh, our look ahead to the next semi-final. Julia Gerger's up against uh, Serena Williams.